reading from the gospel according to Matthew. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on them. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. And then came and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy. He ran to tell his disciples. Then suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, where they will see me. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Channel was on. But one of those stations 
that uh, get your interest and is always breaking away to commercials. <laughs> well, the Shah of Turin is 14 feet long. It's a cloth that was believed by many to be the very shroud that wrapped the body of Jesus as he lay in the tomb. And the story about the shroud has been around for a very long time. 25 or 30 years ago, and some of us might remember that, church officials in Turin allowed a team of researchers, scholars, and specialists to actually handle the shroud, which are usually kept locked in a glass case just for display. Allowed them to handle it, to examine it, and to do tests on the cloth with the aim of determining its authenticity. To find out whether or not it may be what people claim it to be. There is a faint image, a faint image and an outline of the body that can see, be seen on the cloth, although only at a distance, when you get up close, you can't make it up. The material appears to be bloodstained on the front and on the back, where the head would be, and where the torso, front and back, the hands and the feet would have rested. Well, the history of the shroud is spotty and is incomplete, but there is enough evidence to trace it back to the 1300s for sure. Back then, 25, 30 years ago, when the team of researchers announced their findings based on the science of carbon dating, the cloth was said to be no later than the 13th century AD, in keeping with its own history. With that announcement, the shroud was dismissed as either a hoax or simply an object of misplaced piety. Well, the TV program I stayed with was fascinating. It told the story of another team of researchers, present-day researchers, whether it was this year or last year or a couple years ago. And their aim was to map a realistic, a three-dimensional picture of the face that appears on the shroud, based on the outline that is visible using advanced computer technology. I know nothing about 